Hi, I'm Jackson Bird, and today I want to talk about a weird experience that can happen when you transition as an adult. Originally, I was going to make a whole video about the pros and cons of transitioning as an adult, and I will still probably do that, so if you are watching far enough in the future, click here to go watch that. Maybe. <laughs> but as I was writing, I got really stuck on one piece in particular, and it's one that I think can be especially relevant around the holidays. So I thought I would talk about just this weird one today. But first, a quick message about today's sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. Now, despite having this truly questionable mustache right now, I still have to shave every day to keep all this kind of business looking clean. But even if I didn't have anything to shave at the moment, I'd still love Dollar Shave Club because they have you covered for all of your grooming needs. Shower, oral care, deodorants, and of course, shaving. And especially during lockdown, I've really leaned into having like skincare kind of products that are uplifting and just make me feel good. Like sure, less people are seeing me up close, but between the stress and the maskne, it feels extra good to take care of myself. And Dollar Shave Club sent me their ultimate shave starter set, which comes with the weighty executive handle and a pack of high quality blades. You also get a one ounce tube of Dr. Carver's prep scrub, which is awesome at preventing those like annoying ingrown hairs, a one ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter, and a one ounce tube of Dr. Carver's post shave dew, which definitely falls into my category of skincare items that just make you feel good. So that is currently my favorite. And apart from shaving, Dollar Shave Club has a whole new skin line, including sunscreen, their eye savior, and their acne eraser, so you can feel fresh and confident no matter what your routine is. So visit dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird to get the ultimate shave starter set for only $5 and round out your grooming routine by adding any of their other high quality products. After that $5 box, razors will ship at regular price. By supporting and buying from Dollar Shave Club, you are enabling them to support my channel. So thank you to you watching and to Dollar Shave Club. And again, just go to dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird to take advantage of the $5 offer. More info in the description box. Okay. So the weird thing about coming out as trans and transitioning as an adult. I should preface this by saying that I came out as trans and started transitioning when I was 25, about five and a half years ago, and I was very privileged to be living on my own and have a job that enabled me to be completely financially independent from my parents. I also lived very far away from them. I live in New York City and my parents then, as they still do, lived in Texas and New Mexico. So I only see them once a year or so, less than that this year. Thanks, COVID. So when I say adult, I am specifically talking about people who were totally independent from their parents or the people who raised them and who live far enough away that you don't see them that often. And that's not everyone's experience of adulthood, but maybe some of this will sound familiar, even if it's not. And like, I am genuinely curious if any other trans or possibly just queer people have felt this. So you know that thing where when you go back to your hometown or you spend time with your family, you kind of revert to what you were like as a kid or a teenager? Like, bad habits might come back, or you find yourself arguing about minor things with your parents or siblings. A great recent example of that is in that new queer holiday rom-com, The Happiest Season, with the character Harper. Like, wow, she fell hard into that. And I think part of why this phenomenon can happen is because on some level, you all still see each other as the people you were when you lived together, when you were growing up. Like in some ways, my brother is forever eight years old. An eight year old who is older than me, but still eight years old. So the trans side of this, in my experience, has been that Despite how much I feel just like an ordinary guy in pretty much every aspect of my everyday life, when I go see my family, or sometimes even just talk to them on the phone, it's difficult to feel like my true out self around them. Like there just feels like some kind of divide. Either I'm my full adult man self, or I'm close with them and vibing how we used to, but I haven't quite figured out how to do both yet. At least without overthinking it or in a way that I feel comfortable. It's not that I think any of them still see me as the girl I tried to be when I was 16, but maybe they do wonder where she went. And I think we all still struggle to figure out where this new guy fits in. Like, yes, I am the same me I've always been, but at the same time, our world is pretty gendered, and I was never 
a brother or a son in our family dynamic growing up. And I mean, I have changed, and not just on account of being trans, but because of being an independent adult person. We've all changed in the 12 years since we all lived together, my immediate family and I. I just don't have as much anchoring me back to those days. You know, if a personality from childhood were to re-emerge when I'm with them, as it does for so many adults when you spend time with your family, for me, it would be a personality of falsehood, weighed down by confusion and shame. And I think that does come out sometimes when I'm with them and I don't act my best. And when I'm trying to act my best, I'm a little confused about who I am and where I belong exactly, despite being very sure about those things in my day-to-day -day life away from them. Sometimes it feels like there's a question going unasked or just a well of emptiness in the place where there used to be unthinking casualness or something. Just normal being and not thinking about it or having any blockage there. And as much as it feels more right for them to refer to me as a son and a brother, it still feels exceptionally weird when they do. And I think the biggest reason for that is just not having seen them often enough since transitioning. If it's still weird to them, I mean, that makes sense because they've only seen me a handful of times in the past five and a half years. And I've got to accept that it still feels weird to me for the same reason. You know, if I'd been seeing them every day or even just every month as I started transitioning, I think it would be different. For example, I have a lot of long distance friends and my transition felt weird for longer with some of them as opposed to my friends that I saw every day because we we only saw each other a couple times a year. And so I think it takes time for them to get used to you and you to get used to how you're being received or any part of your transition that is new for you. It's just, it, it's called transition for a reason, you know? You have to get used to some elements of it and the people around you get used to you. I wish it weren't a thing, but it is. Humans change and when we change, we have to get used to changes. But anyway, me and those long distance friends, we got to a place of normalcy a lot more quickly than with my family because I assume, you know, those friends didn't know me for as long as my family did before I transitioned. And I think that's kind of part of it too. Like for many of us, no one has known us longer than our family. So just like with any other life changes, it's gonna take time to adjust to. Another element I think is that this is a huge part of my life that my parents as cisgender people will never fully understand. It's a part of my whole that I'm not sure how to share or how comfortable they really are with me sharing it. And they weren't with me when I was going through the biggest parts of realizing who I was and starting to transition. They just got occasional updates when I was comfortable delivering them, instead of being there every step of the way and helping me out and seeing it firsthand. And I think that makes a big difference because we had to adjust to it completely separately, even with kind of different buckets of information, instead of adjusting together and like growing and changing together. It's just, tough because growing further away from your parents is an unfortunately common experience for a lot of adults. But I do feel like being trans or possibly even just being queer can sometimes put a deeper, harder to cross divide there. And there are a couple of ways it can bring you closer together. And for some people, it may just bring you closer together. But these are some of the subtle ways that it can not like weigh you down, at least just make you think about it sometimes. And I do just want to underscore here that my family is great. Like they all accept me and they're not actively weird about anything anymore related to me being trans. Anyway, my family is pretty weird. <laughs> this is just like an undercurrent that I sometimes become aware of and probably am just like overthinking and making up in my head in some ways. But I wanted to share in case anyone else who transitioned or came out as an adult feels it sometimes too. I would love to hear what your experiences have been, what your thoughts are down in the comments. And I hope everyone has a safe and healthy holiday season. I feel like this year is complicated because many of us are, are staying safe by not traveling to be with our family. And that can be really sad and heavy, but also a blessing for some people who have a tough relationship with their family. But even then, being alone and thinking about why you're not with family, in particular this year, can be a lot. So please do what you need to do to find some light in the darkness, you know, make new traditions, reach out and talk to people, get some fresh air, watch TV shows or listen to music that makes you happy. You've got this, I believe in you. Life is and always will be in so many ways just plain weird. But we're all in this together, just a 
bunch of weirdos on this little blue planet of ours, floating in space, trying to do our best. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.